Kay Witt, designer for Serendipity Studio, and I'm so happy to be here today to talk to you about bias trim for dresses. Specifically, we're going to be looking at sundresses because they're so perfect for travel and just the perfect summer item to wear when you're out on vacation or shopping or whatever it is that you happen to be doing. Um, so what I'd like to start with is a way for you to take a pattern that has a facing on the neckline or on the armholes and a way to change that to bias trim. Now the reason that I like to do that is because bias trim is great for lots of reasons. One, it can add a nice contrast onto your garment that you're working on. It is easy to apply and it's really stable if you do a few things before you get started. So I would like to show you an example of a dress that has a facing so that we all know what I'm talking about. So on this dress here, you can see that it has a facing along the edge. And this could easily be converted to a bias trim along this edge uh, simply by, uh, I, what I would like to do is, is stay stitch it probably about, oh, I would say a quarter to three eighths of an inch from the raw edge. And that, that what that does is that stabilizes the edge of the fabric so that it doesn't stretch during sewing or during wear, which is really important for the life of the garment, for it to look brand new, no matter how many times you've worn it or washed it. So what I, what I brought with me today is a simple little two-piece uh, shift dress, and I've already got it turned wrong side out, and what we're going to do is add uh, a bias trim here to the neckline. So I, you can see here that I've already added it to the armhole, and the reason that the dress is turned wrong side out is because I want to add the bias to the wrong side so that I can flip it around to the right side of the dress and then it becomes a decorative element once the uh, dress is finished. So I've got my bias trim here. I cut a two inch strip and it is pieced with a quarter inch seam and pressed open so that it lays nice and flat and then it's folded in half and pressed. And then what I like to do is press about a half an inch in on the end so that I have a finished edge when, um, when the, the trim has been added. So this is the back of the dress and what I'm going to do is just fold this in half and snip right on that fold. And that tells me where the center back is and that's where I'm going to start. So we're gonna go over to the machine now and I've got my, my bias. And we'll go over to the machine. I notice that I've got it set up here on the free arm. That way I can slide my neckline right under the machine and it just makes it so easy to stow. And I'm starting with my folded under edge on my uh, bias trim. I'm gonna put that right at the center, but that isn't where I'm going to begin stitching because when I come back around, I want to be able to tuck my cut end inside of that pressed under end. So we're going to do about a 3 8 of an inch seam. Oh, and I should mention, I mentioned stay stitching earlier, and, and now I'm showing you that I'm not doing it. That's simply because this particular neckline doesn't have as much of a curve on it. Uh, so it really remains stable unless you're a beginning sewer and then you might want to go ahead and do that stay stitching. But since I've done, I don't know how many of these, I'm gonna be brave and do it without that. So we're gonna get started stitching now. And we'll just follow the curve of this neckline. Notice how I'm not pulling on the fabric. I'm just letting it glide through the machine. And we'll just continue on around here. Yeah, let's see. Continuing with that 3 8 inch seam. And notice I've got the fold of that bias and my raw edges together. I opt not to pin when I'm doing this sort of a neckline. You can pin if you'd like, if it makes you more comfortable. I just find that it's not really necessary. Now, I'm coming back around here to the, the center back, and here's my folded edge. I'm gonna give myself about an extra half an inch or so. Cut away the extra, and I don't need that anymore. 
come around and I'm going to tuck that cut end inside. And what I like to do is to leave that open, stitch over it just a bit, back up. And then let's back it up a little, little more. And then we'll close that. And we'll back stitch. And now the bias has been added. Okay, so trim our threads. And now that bias has been added to the neckline. So what I will do now is come over and do a little bit of pressing at our sleeve board. I like to use a sleeve board because then I don't have to worry about trying to get this on the end of the large ironing board and just, just easier. So what I'm gonna do is turn that seam toward the dress. And I like to use lots of steam. It gives you a nice crisp edge. We'll just work our way around. If you don't have a sleeve board, I highly, highly recommend one. I've been using one for years. They're great, obviously, for sleeves, but they're wonderful for necklines and armholes. Okay, so the seam is pressed, and what I'll do next is turn the dress right side out. And once again on the sleeve board, we're just going to turn this trim to the outside now. And any little threads, I'll just tuck them in. If I need to trim, I will. Again, because this is a curved edge, you might be tempted to trim that, I mean, clip the seam, the seam allowance, but I don't usually find that I'd really need to. If it were a deeper curve, I probably would. And I should mention on this bias type trim, I find that a V-neck is a little tricky, so I recommend that you stay with a straight edge like what we have over there on the display or on a curved neckline like this because then you don't have to fuss with how will I pivot and will it look nice and that sort of thing. So I think that it's better to do it this way. Use it with this sort of a neckline. And you know, the other plus about doing this versus a facing is that notice how, how narrow this shoulder is. If you had a facing on the armhole and on the neckline, there's just a lot of bulk there with the, the facing. So that's why the bias is another, there's another bonus right there on that. So well, let's go back to the sewing machine now. And I'm going to start at that center back seam and we'll stitch this outside edge down. So, Again, I'm going to start at my, at my folded under edge, at the center back. And we'll get started stitching. Now, I like to stitch really close to the edge of that folded uh, fabric. And notice as I go along, I will tuck in any little stray threads, whatever I need to do to make that look nice. We'll just make our way around. stitching until we reach that center back again. Okay, we're approaching the shoulder. Almost all the way around now. All right, I'm back, I'm gonna back stitch. And, okay, so 
Our neckline is all crisp and finished. Oh, that's back. Let's look at the front. So, just need to trim a few threads, my beginning threads, and there it is. So one of the things that I would probably do now, I'm just going to use my sleeve board like a regular ironing board and give it one more press. And then what I would like to do is talk to you a little bit about fabric choices. A lot of people get really intimidated by fabric, can't decide what kind of fabrics to use, what's the best thing, is this print too big, is it too crazy? Really, it's going to depend on your personality and your personal taste, and it's just some practice in playing with fabrics. But notice how I use such a, a really big scale print for this particular dress. And the reason that I did that is because this dress only has two pattern pieces, and that way the fabric isn't all cut into little bitty pieces and you don't lose the design. It lets the fabric make a statement. So I've got some other samples that I brought with me today. I've got this blue dress back here. And notice that I used um, one, one, two, three, four, five different fabrics here. And notice here I've got that bias trim on this dress here and at the armholes. On this next dress, I've decided to use a border print. In border prints, you have to open the fabric up, fold it the other way, and then cut your pieces out. But notice how I used it to edge the sleeve and along the bottom, and I think that makes it look really cool. And then last, I've just got another one of the shift dresses that's in a, a large print, and show, to show you how you can showcase the different prints. So, have fun with your fabrics. <laughs>